Let's talk about protein. So in the study that I mentioned at the beginning of the carb video in this series, researchers who examined two groups, one on a high carb diet and one on a high protein diet with total calories and fat intake about the same, found that the high carb group had considerably lower cortisol levels, higher T, lower SHBG, and lower cortisol binding protein levels than the high protein group. So with fat intake and calorie levels being equal in both groups, this demonstrates not only the necessity of adequate carb intake to support testosterone, but also the potentially detrimental effects of neglecting one macronutrient group in pursuit of consuming an abnormally high amount of another. Protein, especially in fitness-minded individuals, is almost always this macronutrient. And that's the topic of today's video. All of the information in today's video, plus much more, can be found in my book, Master Your Tea. Visit MasterYourTea.com for a free digital download of the book. $20 in value, absolutely free for you. And with the protein obsession prevalent in today's fitness community, it's entirely possible that the main reason that many men who are otherwise fit and appear healthy still suffer from symptoms of low T and chronic stress. That is basically based on the chronic pursuit of more protein in their diet, usually out of fear of muscle catabolism. And that's actually inadvertently sabotaging their endocrine health. This is because the increase in protein consumption will always accompany a decrease in consumption of both fats and carbohydrates, arguably the two more important macronutrients for endocrine support. As we see when we look at the research on fat intake and testosterone levels, dietary protein is possibly the least important macronutrient in terms of supporting testosterone. Therefore, it should be consumed at the absolute minimum level required for muscle support and training, and the remainder of the diet should consist of carbs and fats if testosterone optimization is your goal. Now, luckily, at the end of this video, I propose a novel way to consume all the adequate macronutrient levels while still maintaining a high training load and a lean muscular body, as well as facilitating fat loss. Now, protein is by far the least demonized macronutrient at the moment. It's considered to be the holy grail of nutrition, and it's not uncommon to see gym rats and bodybuilding websites recommending to cut down on fat and carbon intake just for the sake of getting an increased protein amount in your diet. Now, protein might be the most important macronutrient for maintaining lean mass, but for testosterone production, it's not. That's right, more protein is not cool for your balls, no matter what the bodybuilding site says and the guys who try to sell you their whey protein powders. Let's look at how dietary protein impacts testosterone production. Now, I've personally never enjoyed high protein diets. I don't really think anybody enjoys them. Many guys swear by them, but they're often the guys who sell the, the whey protein powders too. And they're usually on hormone replacement therapy, SARMs and anabolic steroids. These last six years or so, I've been hitting the gym, mostly focusing on fats, carbs, and total caloric intake. Of course I do eat protein. I get most of it from beef and collagen but I eat a lot less than the bodybuilding sites recommend for guys my size, probably actually half of what they recommend. Yet I've never had any problems with muscle building or strength, even when I didn't have freakishly high testosterone levels. Now, the reason behind me not eating a high protein diet is simple. I wanna maintain high testosterone naturally, and a high protein diet is detrimental for tea production. The more protein you eat, the more you have to cut out of your carbohydrates and fats, and the more you cut from those two, the lower your tea level production will be. That's because carbs and fats are superior to protein when it comes to natural tea optimization. This is obvious when you look at the research. Now in this study, which had 1,552 men as test subjects between age 40 and 70, they found that when many low protein, their SHBG increases. Now this occurrence actually leads to reductions in free testosterone level because SHBG is a protein that binds to free testosterone molecules in the blood, making them unavailable for direct use of the body. So at least in older men, low protein intake might be a bad idea. What is a low protein according to these researchers though? Much lower than the amount that's actually uh, recommended by the, the bodybuilding sites. So in this study, the researchers found that diets high in protein lower testosterone levels in men who practice strength training. And in this finished study, they found out that when consuming a drink with 25 grams of protein, which was whey and casein right before strength training, it significantly lowered testosterone and growth hormone levels in the subject, which is really interesting. So as you can see, protein truly is the least important macronutrient when it comes to boosting your T levels. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a bad nutrient, but eating a high protein diet leaves room for less carbs and fats, which are superior for optimizing natural tea production. The source of protein also seems to be important. For testosterone optimization, animal sources are superior to plant sources, especially if your goal is to build muscle. Now, if you're actively lifting weights, I would recommend that about 25% of your daily calories comes from animal proteins. This is easily enough for muscle building purposes if 
for some weird reason you would still want to consume more protein than that, it'd be best to consume more protein on your workout days and less on your rest days in a way that your total weekly protein intake still averages out to around that level. So hopefully this video shed some light uh, for you on, on uh, how to focus on your macronutrient levels and to make sure that you are not over consuming protein because there is a level where you're consuming more than your body needs and it can potentially have a negative hormonal effect on you. So again, all this information is found in my book, Master Your Tea, which you can go and get for free over at masteryourtea.com or you can pay $20 for it on Amazon. Uh, but you know, if you want to get it for free, masteryourtea.com. It covers everything you ever need to know about natural tea production. And then if you go over there too, uh, enter your email in there, you'll get a $5 coupon for Testro X as well. So go check out masteryourtea.com. Subscribe to this channel if you're not subscribed already. Ask me any questions in the comments and I'll see you on the next video.